Some people have asked ChatGPT to summarize the investment style of Warren Buffett and then to suggest the stocks that he may invest in. Maybe this is something that we now all should do. Instead of us looking for stocks, let's just ask ChatGPT or maybe another AI and try to make investments. It's going to save us so much time. But actually, if you think about it, there are two main issues with this. Number one is that there is a cutoff in 2021 for all the data that ChatGPT uses. So the information about the stocks that ChatGPT is giving you is not up to date. They don't know what's happening in the market today. They know about 2021. And the second issue is that if you think about it of how ChatGPT works, it is a language AI, although some people will not say that this is an artificial intelligence. It's, it's not, it has not developed consciousness yet, but okay, let's say this is a program that is based on language. The purpose is to communicate with you to be able to answer your questions and of course look for information from books from the internet. They don't give us their sources, but it gets the information from several sources. And from these sources, there are people before who have tried to emulate the investment style of Warren Buffett. And these people normally what they do is that they build formulas, they build equations of how to look for these investments and then you input some data and they will tell you how and when to invest in these stocks. This is something that is very common. And actually, when you think about it, not just AI, but using algorithm computers, and I'm not talking about simple computers that you have at home, but about supercomputers or big computers. The people that use these the most are hedge funds, are people who are investing, trying to beat the market. We have talked about algorithmic trading before. So it is the same thing. So ChatGPT, if you use it for investing, to ask for investment advisors, it is the same thing you're reducing ChatGPT to a normal algorithmic trading bot. There is nothing exceptional about it except in the way that it communicates with you. So maybe we should not even be making this video if we cannot use it for investments. Actually, we should. We can use ChatGPT to make investments, but not the way that most people are thinking. And we should use it because it reminds me of what Socrates said about writing. Over 2000 years ago, Socrates said that writing is bad for memory. So if you are going to write books, you are going to read books, you have information available, you're not going to memorize all of this. But now everyone will disagree with him. We need to use writing. It's the same thing about AI and any other technology. Our brains are getting smaller and maybe you are not happy about this, but in a way it is good because we can build bigger cities, we can communicate with more people. So we have access to more information. Instead of us memorizing everything, we can Google it, we can read in books, ChatGPT and other incoming AIs. This is just another step further in human evolution. So you as the investor, you want to make money in the market, you need to know how to use this. Everyone in 30 years is going to use AI in their daily lives. But if you start early, you're going to gain an advantage over all these people. So how do you use this? Let's learn from the great investors. Warren Buffett doesn't use AI. He doesn't even use a computer to make an investment. He uses his brain, but we are not as smart as him. So let's try to look at other investors who are so smart, but nobody is as smart as Warren Buffett. Let's look at Ray Dalio. And why it is important to look at Ray Dalio is because he has the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates. So in, compared to Warren Buffett with 25 people in Berkshire Hathaway, main office where there's actually only a couple of them making investments with Warren Buffett being the main guy. So it is almost a one man company, but uh, Bridgewater Associates, they have 1,500 people working for them. Even if Ray Dalio is the brain behind the company, but they make these investments based on more data compared to Warren Buffett. So collecting data and converting it into information, this is what computers do. And Bridgewater Associates do that uh, in a good way. They have been able to have great returns over the long term. So what Ray Dalio tells us is that he uses the algorithm. He did not mention about AI, but I believe he's going to apply the same thing with AI. So he uses the algorithm, the computer, and also the human brain together. It should not just be the algorithm, the computer, doing the investments, or only the human brain. It should be a combination of both. And actually, this is something that was also mentioned by great chess players such as uh, Gary Kasparov. He said that uh, the way he sees the machine and 
humans in chess it, it is best when there is a combination of both i play chess i play with humans i play with computers but when you are playing with a computer you know you are playing with a computer because of the moves they make a human will never sacrifice their queen for no apparent reason but a computer might do it because they know that five steps uh, ahead this is a good decision but a human cannot do these calculations so you know you are playing with a computer and when i'm playing with a human there are some psychological tricks you can use even if you don't see the person you're playing uh, online there are psychological tricks you can use you can make a move you know with a high probability that the other person will fall into your trap this is something a computer will never do because they don't know they know only by logic so how does this affect investing if you are looking at chess, this is a closed game. There are only a limited number of moves. And there are already solutions for all the end games with seven pieces on the board. So if you are playing a game of chess and there are seven pieces on the board, there is a solution to this particular setting. You just need to know the solution to know how to win. But most chess players, even the best in the world, they don't do this. Because they are not going to learn all these. There are so much information to learn. I also solve the Rubik's Cube and there are algorithms you have to learn. I remember I learned over 100 algorithms, but, but there is a limit to how much you can learn. With these 100 algorithms, maybe I can solve it in 15 seconds, the world champions can solve it in 5 seconds. But uh, let's ignore that they have physical limits, that their muscles are not going to work that fast. Ignoring that, there are ways to solve a Rubik's Cube with less moves, faster, but you have to learn all these algorithms, millions of them which nobody, no human can do. Once again, this is a closed system. There are only a limited number of moves. But what about something as complex as the stock market, which is an open system where the rules are always changing. When I'm talking about the rules, I'm not talking about regulations, but I'm talking about the way we invest. It is always changing because even the weather affects the stock market. When the weather is bad, it is raining, people are more pessimistic and they are going to invest less. This is a known fact. And the weather itself is difficult to predict. The stock market is even more difficult to predict. It is the most complex system in the world. That's why it is so hard to beat the market. If you think that an artificial intelligence will come and try and be able to beat the market, I'm not just talking about chat GPT, it's not going to happen. It is only when there are some set of rules that can be used that the AI will have an advantage over the human. But here the rules are always changing. That's why AI is able to write better poetry than humans, to draw better than humans because there are a set of rules that has been written. When there is this in a poem, people like it. People find it beautiful. So the AI will write a beautiful poem. But, but in a hundred years, that doesn't mean that we will have the same standard of beauty. If the AI doesn't adapt, it's unable to write a good poem. So there should be breaking of rules. Only humans knows how to break the rules. So how do I use ChatGPT for my investments? How do I combine both to get both the, the logical part of the AI and also the human part where you are breaking the rules, where you're making mistakes, which is essential to investing. Whenever you're using Microsoft Excel in your investing, you are being held by a machine. If you're using a screener online, or maybe you have a supercomputer at your home, you're using a machine, but you're interpreting the data yourself. It is the same thing with ChatGPT. I don't trust what ChatGPT tells me, but I have used it for investments. I asked ChatGPT, I'm looking at a new sector, a new company, I, I don't know about it. And there are some terms I don't understand. I have done this actually. I asked ChatGPT, please explain this to me. And it explained it to me in simple English that I can understand. Of course, I could have looked for the information elsewhere, but it would take me more time. Once it has explained this to me, I can read the 10K of the company better, faster. This is what I use ChatGPT for. And when I have to communicate this information now, maybe there is something I don't know exactly how to say. It. And I can ask ChatGPT for help because Overall, it is a language-based AI. It is about language. It's not about math. It's not about investing. So if you're trying to use it for investing, you're doing the wrong thing. But you can use it to better understand the documents from reading. Because as an investor, Warren Buffett says you have to read 500 pages a day. Most of the time, these are financial documents. And ChatGPT will not know how to read financial documents. 
investment bankers, accountants don't know how to read financial documents and you think that ChatGPT will know how to do it? Of course not. But it's the way that they convey this information to you. I'm using they should have been it. Maybe we can even assume that uh, ChatGPT is a boy. So the way that he conveys this information to us, this is what you can use to your advantage. Maybe in the future, there's going to be other AIs that will be more applicable to investors. For example, you're using Microsoft Excel, you're looking at data and you have built charts. You're not seeing everything in the chart. There's an AI that is going to be built that uh, will make you understand the chart better. Maybe some correlation you're not seeing between multiple data. And maybe this is going to help you. But for the time being, we don't have such things. Some people try to build their things, but they are not good. Otherwise, these people will be beating the market, which they don't do. Overall, I will say, please use AI. Please use ChatGPT. Use all of this. It's not the only one that I use. And I don't use it only for investing. I use it for other things. For example, I'm writing a book and it helps me. Of course, I don't copy and paste. I try to understand what it's saying to me. I use other AIs, I use Grammarly. And from all of this combined, I try to form another image into my head and then write what I want to write. And it makes my writing better. It's the same thing when it comes to investing. So you need to try all these AIs. Don't say that you're not going to try them. And it's important to try them as an investor to understand how they work because in the future, most probably you're going to invest in them. When we are talking about Meta, how Apple is making it harder for them to gain access to your data. And then I said one of the solutions was to use AI. So instead of Meta trying to use the algorithms on your data to know which ads to show you, they are going to use an AI to predict which ads to show to you. So if you are going to invest in Meta, over the long term, if this is going to be their main way of making money, you need to understand how it works. And one way you can understand that is by watching this video about Meta. So have a nice day and goodbye.